The name Henry Morgenthal elicits a passionate response in this country, revered as a hero by some, denounced as a murderer by others. One thing both sides can agree on, Morgenthaler changed the course of history in this country. The abortion rights activist died today at the age of 90. His family says he suffered a heart attack. The CBC's Adrian Arsenault has a look back on the life of a man at the centre of an issue still hotly debated today. Defiance. It is what once saved Dr. Henry Morgenthaler. It is certainly what pained him, what earned him adoration and gratitude in Canada, as well as decades of threats and contempt. Bravery in abundance and not a moment's regret. His best day ever, he was fond of saying, was January 28, 1988. The day Canada's Supreme Court tossed out Canada's laws against abortion. Bravo for the Supreme Court of Canada. Bravo for the women of Canada. An end to the laws that determined abortions could only be done in hospitals only when approved by committees. A milestone moment for Canadian women delivered by a man from Poland. He survived the Nazi death camps of Auschwitz and Dachau, had every reason to just try to build a quiet, comfortable, peaceful life. But he chose to fight, he said, to protect women. We believe that any woman should have the right to ask for a termination of pregnancy within the first three months of pregnancy. In 1969, he walked away from a lucrative private practice as a family doctor and began performing illegal abortions in Montreal, ultimately thousands of them. In an interview just a few years ago, he explained that he knew exactly what he was taking on in those early years. I knew that if I started doing abortions in a, uh, on a bigger scale, that eventually I'd have to face the criminal code and prosecution. Indeed he did, spending 10 months in jail. Ultimately, he opened clinics across the country wherever he felt women were at risk. And like clockwork, there were raids, protests, charges, and worse, violence. Even after the Supreme Court victory, the street got ugly. His Toronto clinic torched, bombed, a sniper plotted to kill him, and the shouting did not stop. Those who once stood on the clinic steps guarding the man and the cause have nothing but gratitude for Morgenthaler today. He was determined not to be stopped you know he and I think the Holocaust experience was very key to that because he saw what could happen if you don't stand up for what you believe in. It's a measure of Canada now that Morgenthaler's clinics today are still deeply conscious of security often adorned with bulletproof windows. Decades after those abortion laws were struck down in this country there are still some who want to reopen the debate anti-abortion postcards passed out in the Prime Minister's writing recently, and Morgenthaler foes far from remembering him as a heroic figure now. Will his death change anything? I don't know, but I do hope that uh, you know, th this discussion will be ongoing so that people, more people realize what abortion is and what he did to children in the womb. Even an honorary degree, even the Order of Canada, every award greeted with anger by some. But Dr. Henry Morgenthaler was made of steely stuff. I have to die tomorrow by an assassin's bullet. Well, at least I've achieved something in my life. He always wanted, he said, to leave a mark, to feel he accomplished something, that he mattered. No friend or foe could deny that he did just that. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Toronto.